Who is God? Is God just whatever we think of him? Meaning, I think God is a Russian figure skater who likes to horseback ride. Does that mean God is actually a Russian figure skater? Or is God a real person? Meaning, my opinions and preferences about him doesn't change who he is. Similar to your opinions and thoughts of me, don't change who I am. The Catholic believes that God is really real. And God, in his love for us, revealed himself. He most clearly revealed himself by becoming man. By becoming one of us, Jesus makes visible the invisible God so that we could clearly understand who he is and what he's about. Not that we could understand everything about God, but we can understand what he has revealed to us. So in this video, we're going to learn how after Jesus ascended to heaven, how this revelation about God was passed on and protected from false teaching. So around 33 AD, Jesus ascended to heaven. He wasn't here on earth anymore, right? But before he ascended to heaven, he commissioned his apostles to continue the work that he had started. He passed the baton to them. In order for them to do his ministry well, he gave his apostles, through the power of the Holy Spirit, his power to teach and minister. So we have Jesus passing on, through the power of the Holy Spirit, his, his ministry, his, his ability to teach and minister. So the apostles go out spread the good news. They go from town to town, preaching, teaching, celebrating Mass, building local communities of faith. And during this time, some of this teaching gets put into writing. We call the oral form of the Word of God sacred tradition. So that preaching and teaching we call sacred tradition. And some of this preaching and teaching was put down into writing, and we call that sacred scripture or the Bible. And so the good news is spreading. People are coming to faith in Jesus. People are getting baptized. Lives are getting restored and healed. People are experiencing life to the full, profound new freedoms. But then disputes arose. Some people were unsure if certain teachings were from God or just per personal preferences. The work of God was being hindered and lives are being unnecessarily burdened by these disputes and personal preferences. At this time, did God just abandon the infant church? Say, hey, just go figure it out yourselves. Did God just say, all opinions of me are equally valid. Just sincerely believe in whatever you want. God somehow must uh, chant stuff. But um, did God do all that? No. God did not abandon his people. God did not say all claims were equally true or valid. When Jesus gave the apostles his power to teach, he gave them his authority to settle disputes so that God's people will know the truth and be set free. This is clearly seen in Acts chapter 15. A dispute arose regarding if new Gentile Christians would need to be circumcised. This was a huge issue causing division in the church. The apostles, our first bishops, gathered in Jerusalem in what would be our first church council. At this council, the Holy Spirit, through the first bishops, determined what the will of God. Determined the will of God. Gentiles did not need to be circumcised. The dispute was settled so that the correct teaching of God could be preached and taught. So what happened here was that the apostles, our first bishops, came together with Peter, our first pope, and when the bishops and the pope get together, we call that the magisterium. And the role of the magisterium is to, it's the official teaching office of the church. It's sort of like how our government has different branches, like the executive, legislative branch. Well, the church teaching branch is called the magisterium. So we see in Acts chapter 15 that the magisterium gathered and demonstrated its authority to teach with Jesus' power, therefore settling the dispute over, over circumcision. So in this sense, the magisterium's role in the church acts like a divinely guided umpire. You know, what does an umpire do in baseball? He tells if the pitcher threw a ball or a strike. And if this umpire was divinely guided, he would not err in telling us if the pitcher threw a ball or a strike. So the magisterium, having Jesus' authority to tell us if a teaching is a strike, correct teaching, or a ball, incorrect teaching. Using one more analogy. Pretend you're walking up a treacherous path. You know, we would feel a lot safer if we would have guardrails protecting us so we don't slip off into the dangerous terrain. The magisterium helps set up those guardrails of what is the authentic Christian gospel. So we don't slip off the path into incorrect understandings of God's revelation. So to summarize this, Jesus passes the baton to the apostles. 
our first bishop, bishops preached. And some of this preaching and teaching was put down into writing, sacred scripture or the Bible. And some of this was put into, uh, in, in the oral form is called sacred tradition. And the magisterium acted to make sure that the correct teaching, they protected the correct teaching of Jesus Christ. So these three things are essential to having an understanding of who God is and what he's all about. They act as a tripod. So we got magisterium. We got sacred tradition and sacred scripture. They act as a tripod to hold up and protect the truth. And so if one of these legs are missing, what happens is that the, 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 uh, you know, the thing falls over. And so, who is God? If we want to clearly know God as he reveals himself to be, it is important that our understanding falls in between the guardrails in the strike zone of the magisterial teaching. Thank you.